All right, my friends, welcome back to the DHY Podcast. Here's the deal. We have had a lot of breakthroughs and revelation. Uh, we shoot these shows every two weeks. We should shoot them every week. I think it's a better rhythm, but my wife, she's I got, selfish like that. I got, I shoot. Decides to do no, her own I shoot, shoot every other week. on either hair, fashion, all the good stuff for my Danielle K. White brand. It's good. Mm-hmm. So anyways, the, the show gets weird because there's so much that goes on in between every two weeks so like there's like a last, lot like that last happens. show i had like 14 inch hair this show i have 22 inch hair. yeah exactly i mean it's so like a much little happened. weird all right so we have uh we have a competition uh, this show is going to come out after the competition's over so whatever but it's coming. Five I can't days. We made it. It's coming Saturday. I'm starving. I'm not. I'm weirdly fine. Yeah, well, because you're used to starving. That's what I you're. Like you're hungry. you're a professional like, oh, starver. I'm so skinny. Well, you posted a skinny picture of yourself <laughs> oh on the gosh. internet that turned into a revival. Yeah, like I didn't know revolution. women were such haters. I was like, dude. Why it's would wild. I, tell, tell them what happened? No, I literally I had a picture of me postpartum. I was like two or three weeks, and then. I woke up, it's, this sport is so crazy because you do something called a refeed or you do like carb cycling, you add like some extra carbs, play around and your body like the next day you're like, whoa! Like so I took a photo of my waist sideways after doing like a high carb day and literally even I was like, where'd I go? <laughs> yeah. It's like, that is wild. And it, I posted like the postpartum next to this just to show like how tiny my waist had gotten. And I did like a cute kind of like, what I felt like was an empowering post about like, hey, you know what, everyone has daily habits and patterns and you've got to choose those patterns that are going to give you the end result that you wanted. My end result was a bikini competition. In no yeah. way, shape or form was I saying, you should look like this all year round or I- anything. And women, just off of that photo, if they even actually read the copy, I've, I got so much heat. Like You should pull out your phone and read a couple of these comments. I archived it because I was Why'd so... Why'd you archive it? Because I was so annoyed with how weak. petty don't women show up. It. Put no, it back up. I can, but I don't... Do it right now put it back I up. I don't want to. So my point, the reason I archived it is because I kept going back and reading comments and felt like I needed to fight back. And then I was like, I don't want to fight back. I'm really proud of what I've done and where I've gotten with my body. And I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. But you do. And that's I, why you archived but it. But no, that's why I didn't want to keep reading the comments. It like oh. became addictive. Like it was a Sunday and I found myself getting super irritated because yeah. I felt like I needed to defend my position about, against 58-year-old Gladys who's like, in my professional opinion, I'm like, shut the fuck up, Gladys. But see, I'm already getting heated about it. I was like, dude. I like it. I was wearing I was wearing a Lions Not Sheep Give Violence a Chance t shirt, getting ready for the Ryan Garcia boxing match and we were you were on your phone and you were But I was like so excited for up. date night and then I found it like sucking my energy and so I was like I don't I even know. I thought wanna, it was funny. I was like I don't even I just I was, was encouraging. I literally was mind boggled by people who were like you're prom- you shouldn't be promoting this and I'm like so the fat chubby mom she's more accepted. She should post more of her results of doing nothing. Cool. It, but this is where we're at though this is where we're at it, don't celebrate is, her but don't yeah. like i actually bust my ass every single morning work out did the diet did all the things but i'm getting hated on yeah I'm like that's where we're at that's where we're at i just i was really i even some of my students were like it's, it's my it's just disappointing that she expects more out of people i'm like i will never apologizing for expecting more out of myself and if however you perceive that is on you well, now we know why she archived it. Yeah. Very fired, so up. fired up. Well, I was like, I, I I had no problem with it. You weren't ruining my night being fired up. No, I was I enjoying it. So this, is what, this is the world I live in. I remember the very first time I launched podcast Warrior on Fire. And uh, we, we I mean, we, we brought this on ourselves. I, I deliberately posted and hosted the Warrior on Fire podcast back in 2013. I started that show. And I posted it in the religion and Christianity section, and it was had explicit lyrics. Mm. And I remember I was competing with Joel Osteen and TD Banks and a few You're others, and, and, and Joyce Meyer, which are all like big Christian pastors. And I was competing with them for the top spot, and we took it in iTunes. We took the top spot for a month. We lost it after that, but we had it for a month. For a mm-hmm. month straight, my podcast was the number one podcast in Christian Christianity and in religion this is in 2013 into 2014 a guy named west chapman that's a story for another day a guy turned out to be a complete piece of shit but anyways this um he, that's probably why it was a problem anyways he, he helps to get the podcast up and 
people come in and are making comments like we're making them on your picture. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to handle it. I lost my shit. It was obsessive. Yeah, like, but then don't I you have to ask yourself, this fight. is not worth it. These trolls on online, these keyboard warriors, I'm like, you don't get any more of my time. But it kind of is worth it too. And here's why. Just consider this. Okay. You've got to spar in order to get courage to take a stand for it's yourself true. and your message. So a lot of people like want to be able to take a stand for the message they have, but the minute that he comes in, they're afraid to... They're afraid to punch it's back. Going back up. Or they appreciate, it's you know, hey, right now. you know, I'm Christian and so I don't, you know, I don't punch back. And you're like, uh, but you know, last time I checked in the garden, uh, Peter took a sword and caught a dude's ear off. So that was fucking cool. And he was just defending Jesus. So why can't I defend Jesus? That's why they hang I out in the Old Testament. It. You can unarchive it. Okay. We'll figure Anyways, out. like we did it in the podcast, and like I I, I remember <laughs> spending weeks and weeks just so angry well, and going back and addicted to going mm -hmm. back and looking like at it fighting. like somebody yeah, on a yeah. freeway looking at an accident they can't stop watching so here here's what's crazy so i archived it yesterday because i kept thinking about it and i was like peak week's my favorite like i know some people like if you've ever been done competitions like peak week is like you're one week out to me i'm like you've done the work it doesn't matter about the medals it doesn't matter about anything like you made it through the process there's there's literally like you just kind of that last week it's you kind of coast in i mean as long as you don't totally crazy mess up your diet like it and so peak week's like a high to me because i'm like ah, i made it yeah and so i felt like my just feeling so attacked and that this yeah. was so, so negative i was like i do not need this like i'm i'm getting i did the work this after mm -hmm. my fourth baby i'm a uh I yeah like I was like we're, it's my birthday we're going to Dubai we're doing a show I'm like I refuse to let this mind fuck me so that's why I was like all right I'm going yeah. into peak week strong I I woke up today feeling strong but I was like how you feeling I'm like on fire she's like great right where we want you I have coach I text coach Carter send him pictures she's like right on track I'm like yes <laughs> I'm feeling uh I'm feeling very tired I, I remember like coach talking to me about this he's like you're, I don't remember feeling this tired last time. Cause he, he cut our carbs harder this time. Like even me, I was like, I've always had a little bit of carbs on peak week and he's like, no carbs. He's like, like none. And he sent me back a cry emoji face. <laughs> it's like, I had, it. I had my carbs. I had, I had a banana with my protein shake. Yeah. And I had a, a rice cake with avocado. So the much. The fact that this is now where I'm at in my life where I could consider a cheat, a plain rice cake Everyone on the team meeting noticed it today too. I was eating a plain rice cake they're and like, they're like, oh, oh we're even down ones. to plain rice cakes. Where's your caramel ones? I was like, they're gone. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's like 30 calories less per rice cake. Basically, it's like it's, a cucumber. I chew it and not, I burn more calories really than I consume. Though. Here, here's how it goes towards the end. You've already put in all the work. It's literally amount of like drying you out. Mm -hmm. Like, so little things like a rice cake, obviously that's like 30 calories, but it could add a teeny bit more like water weight on places you don't really want. So it's like anything you can cut that can reduce water weight and you dry you out, you've already done the work. You're not going to put any more muscle on this week. Oh, it's so clear. The, so Based the goal is suck the water out and mm -hmm. refeed. Well, I did work out yesterday by myself and today by myself. It's the first time I've trained by myself. Like literally, usually I'm training with Jeff or training with Sergio or training with Stas or training with somebody. Peter, somebody's like trained with me. And so it's been no weird. Now today, Jeff's the kids were, his wife's out of town, so he couldn't come this morning. Hmm. Sergio's back in Colorado. So like I'm sitting there like lifting this morning though, and I'm literally can feel like I'm just, I don't have anything in the tanks. Yeah. So like I'm cutting weight. I'm like cutting like the amount of weight I'm lifting and just going nice and slow yeah. on the lifts. And Carter's just like, yeah. hey, that's where you're you, got, at. you got two more. And then I came yeah. to do cardio today. And you can't. I'll have to get my second cardio in session tank. in, but my there I was like fucking exhausted yeah. trying to row. It literally took me 20 minutes to row 4,000 meters, which normally would take me yeah. 20 minutes to row 5,000 yeah. meters. Is there's nothing in the tank? <clears throat> the last like 10 days for me are a little bit foggy. I'm like, because I start cutting my carbs sooner, and it's like literally. It, but it's so it's such a high. Like I love it. You're like it's like when you did ultra marathons. You know, when mm -hmm. you're like you're just kind of like floating. You're like I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna, quite there because I got too much shit oh. to worry about this week. But I'm I'm sure I'll get there on Friday once we get we get tan on Thursday yeah, and then yeah. we go uh, we go to photo shoot all day with Brett Seely. So that's gonna be exciting. Be fun. So we I I had Brett come in. You had Brett come in and do two photo shoots with you. I had him come in and do my last photo shoot, which was incredible. 
the experience of the photo shoot was better than the experience of the competition. I think it, it shows I the work it. that you put into it. So like you're on stage, it's so nerve wracking, you're worrying while you're posing and this and that, you're too tan to be honest. So then the next day it's like, if you do the photo shoot and then you go back and look at them, you're like, it's almost surreal. You're like, wow, I looked like that. That's super cool. You can see how people like look a certain way for a movie and you're like, they're not gonna maintain that. The, the, no like, movie star ever does. Yeah, you're like, like who was it? Jake Gyllenhaal in Roadhouse? Jake I was like, that guy's abs have abs. Yeah, he's, he's shredded. <laughs> Like, when that happen? Him and McGregor got fairly jacked. But it's like it's. But that's what's cool is when you look at the photos and you're like, you almost even if you don't look like that year round, you're like, that's me. I noticed that's what's <laughs> happening with the fitness world. Is like the people I follow, they start they 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 post all the photos up to the competition mm -hmm. and then they post week of competition photos and then they'll post a bunch like a couple weeks after, after and then you and don't then see you, as many photos about them. Gotta go see it well, because a lot of people go get a lot of people get very like very fluffy in their bulk season men and women it's, it's even like for me i don't consider myself super fluffy but like yeah i'm a stage weight is going to be different than normal danielle weight i'm still yeah. i still look pretty similar in my clothes but like yeah i'm still 218 pounds good job like I'm not even close to like the we're gonna probably be come in around like two fifteen nice. after everything dries out, which is ridiculous because I was two hundred pounds in the competition in October, two hundred pounds. I'm fifteen pounds bigger than I was then, and I was watching looking at photos and videos from the competition in October. I look significantly smaller than I am right now. Well, you're shredded. I was shredded. You're super shredded. Like significantly smaller though. So this whole thing of pushing, I don't, are you gonna do another one after this? I don't know. I, it's I. Here's the thing: is I get so stressed out, and it's so funny because I I always I keep myself. I always joke around. I'm like I keep myself eight weeks out at all times. Like mm -hmm. I'm always I love lifting weights. I'm good at cardio. I'm not a super big foodie. I do like food, but I'm not like crazy about it. I'm smart enough to kind of like know my macros and like it. It really is like. And I have no desire to go pro where I need like put bulk season. Yeah. So for me, I think I almost, I'm like, oh, I'll just lower my expectations and do it for fun. But I can't do anything for fun. I'm so competitive. I'm like, I'm just like competitive with myself. Like, I'm like, I don't want to step mm -hmm. on stage if I don't feel like I gave it my all right. based off of what my expectations are. My expectations yeah. are not to go pro, but I want to do well in the show that I choose, yeah. right? So I don't know. Like part of me is like, I'm never doing one of these again. And I'm like, I don't know. Never, I, I don't know. It's like. I came out of retirement to do one with you. I did one show and I was like, it was during COVID was my first one. Mm -hmm. So my goal is just to do one. I'm like, I'm gonna yeah. do one. I did one show during COVID. No, I committed to doing a show during COVID. The world closed down. So then I decided to um, still c compete. I had to re-register for like four shows in a row. The, all the gyms were closed. I literally trained for that show with like free weights and bands. I finally, a show opens up. My I do it with a mask on. I still did pretty well. And so then I was like, I want to do one more show, but this time I want the full experience, no mask. He's back from. Hey, That's there's so our daughter pretty. from. I feel so disgusting. Yeah, you, you look like you, you look like you've been camping for a I week. I could smell like burnt popcorn coming in, but it's just my daughter oh. back from Coachella. So that's you. Was Coachella great? We're excited. We'll go shower and then come oh. down and tell us about it. Shower and I need some real food. Okay. And we'll get a third no microphone. You can tell us about it. So yeah, so I, yeah, second one, wanted the experience on stage. Was it the second one I found out I was pregnant? Yeah, second yeah. one, I, I got on stage and I was like, I feel weird. I go home the next day, take a pregnancy test, I'm eight weeks pregnant. And I won, by the way. So then I was like, okay, I'll do one more, because I worked so hard to get in such good shape after my third baby, so then I was like, I'll do one more to lose the baby weight. Then you, you decide to get into it. Yeah, and then I won overall on that one. Then you decide to get into it, and I was like, Okay, one more. <laughs> hey, this is going to be fun. We're going together. We're doing it together this week. We were supposed to do it with my brother and his wife, but she got injured, so then they back, they bailed out. He was training. He was ready to go. I'm actually amazed, like, not amazed. I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, impressed by how many people it inspires, though. I know. So many guys I know training right now, just even if they're not training for a show, they're, they're just getting more conscious of what they're eating they're lifting more they're getting healthier they're looking better they're mm -hmm. feeling more more empowered by their body actually committing to doing it is super hard like it really is because you have this expectation of the pros and then you have to remind yourself you're not a pro yeah. so then you're like well i just am not going to do it and you're like you thought you could do one show and be a pro so it because i feel i feel like there's a lot of people that will inspire and they're like, I'm going to do it. And, but making the actual commitment, I'm starting to realize is like a huge deal, especially at our age. I mean, we're in our 40s. We have five kids. We run multiple businesses. It's like it, 
this is a lot of work and it, we're not even treating it like a side hobby like we both want to do well we hire nutritionists we hire trainers we hire posing coaches like we're like okay if we're going to do this like we want to do well so it's just i think that it's almost when the commitment's harder mm -hmm. when the commitment is harder that's when you know the person is actually committed because mm -hmm. you're like they've got way more at stake than a, a weekend hobby they have full-time businesses which means if they're going to take time out of their busy schedule we're going to take it somewhat serious well and that's why i mean we have a chef i have a chef you don't like his cooking I but like i do cooking. and even his fish is good that i'm eating right now like five times a day it's like but when I, you're that I just, hungry everything's good yeah it's probably true <laughs> i just I, I like i really enjoy it i really love it and it's uh it's a lot you need a break when people I, do it's like, a lot when people are like doing back-to-back -back shows i'm like i mean i guess you're kind of in that momentum but yeah, I don't we think I could do We were going to do a show in the year. fall, but we, we decided we're going to audible from the show in the fall and just spend a year building. And yeah. like the goal is to get to 250 pounds. I think it's harder and for guys to do back-to-back -back shows because the cut is different. Like whereas women, we're like at least for bikini, it's like you can kind of keep your yourself in like a lean state and just like keep keep going. This show is, just, this show is way muscle. different. It's like way different. Like the cut is harder. Mm-hmm. This time, it's harder than last time. It's because you put so much, you have actually so much bulk. More muscle yeah, on, yeah, you have so much more, more muscle, so you have to be careful. There's such a balance of like, if they cut you too much, you're gonna lose some of your muscle. Yep, yep, to keep eating. Mm -hmm. At the same time, look, those kids are like. I, it's really loud in here. It's okay. I'm gonna get them to shut the, the door up there. Do you wanna go <laughs> tell them real quick? Go tell them, and I'll, okay. go tell them to shut the door up there and I'll start talking to our, our listeners. So, this entire game that we are playing together has been a game of push and pull. Like Danielle, like Danielle, like inspired me to go, and then I went, and then because I went, it inspired Danielle to go, and back and forth we've been pushing each other this way, which is how marriage should be. It's a constant game of push and pull, push and pull, push and pull, push and pull, and somebody does something exciting and new, which then pulls the other one forward, and it can work the other direction too, though, right? So like just like. You could work in the positive direction of doing something exciting. You can also go in the negative direction, which is bad habits and poor attitude and go the other way, which is plenty of couples we know that have gone the other direction, which is just easier to eat like shit, drink like drink too much and like fall apart physically, which I know plenty of couples like that too. I think it's it's it would be hard because then you've seen it the other way where you have a couple, somebody who's like, I've had enough. I don't want this lifestyle. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to look. It's not even about the look. That's what's so crazy is I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Like you might think I'm too thin or I'm too lean, but you carrying an extra 40 to 50 pounds every day walking on that and what you put in your body, like you don't get to judge me. I guess you can. You can do whatever you want. But then there's like the, the couples who are like, maybe one person is like, hey, I'm not... I'm not abiding by these rules anymore. I'm gonna go get fit and sexy. I feel like if the other person doesn't come along, like what do they do? Because it's not just about the weight. Like you, be, you kind of become a different person. Mm -hmm. like you're like you feel they differently do. about yourself, and you become less tolerant of these mm -hmm. old patterns, behaviors. So I would imagine if the you know say the wife went and lost a lot of weight and the guy didn't go with her, like <laughs> she might be like, okay, well bye, you know. Or I could see it. I could see it definitely creating conflict. It's why I think a lot, particularly in the game of losing weight, this happens a lot. You don't, I don't think it happens the other direction when it comes to getting fit. If you're mm -hmm. both like, you know, lean and then one of you tries to you know, bulk and go put muscle on it so much as no, two see, individuals like, who are yeah. both overweight, one starts to make the move to lose weight and the one that doesn't starts sabotaging. Mm -hmm. And I've watched this happen with several couples oh, we know yes. too. I was thinking. They start sabotaging the success of the one like, that's losing. they're like, oh, come back here. No, look, they like almost like purposely plant like treats and like, purposely are like let's go to our favorite restaurant babe instead of yeah. encouraging them like this has been really hard and i want to like say good job and like hey what can i do to support or how can let's go somewhere healthy like what do you want to do you yeah. know it's like because it's scary when somebody leaves the land of where you're at because they're saying hey this box no longer works for me and i'm gonna go over here so then people immediately are like scared because number one they d don't believe in themselves to go to that next level or that next box or they're unwilling to do the work to get there. And so they're immediately offended, like, oh, you should want to stay here in this box. It's safe. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like it, it challenges the other person who ultimately, it just comes down to like you're, you're comfortable and you don't want to actually do the work and feel uncomfortable, which seems like a crazy place to be in too. Well, here's the deal. Like, if you have a look at this, I, I, I played this video 
I actually want to play it. It's a little clip from, I went back and reposted something that I had had up like a while ago, back when we were pretend like we were gonna do the real White House. <laughs> well, I this. saw that and I was like, what is that? There's a price you're gonna pay for poverty and for prosperity. You as a man don't get a decision whether or not you pay a price. The only thing you get to decision is, is the price that you're willing to pay. Your inaction, your weakness, your lies, your continual game of disconnection and dysfunction, well, that is paying the price for poverty. At the same time, paying the price to put your body, your being, your balance in your business, to put your entire life weaponized as one harmonious unit moving forward, well, that is the price for prosperity. There's pain on either side. You, my friend, are the only one who gets to choose which pain you choose to hide and which one you choose to ride. Choose the pain of prosperity. It's a whole lot easier to hurt when you're fucking rich. Oh, man, that's a little spicy. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier to hurt when you're fucking rich. <clears throat> I mean, look at that. Like, it takes work to be broke. It just does. Like it takes work. Like you have to you have to just not give a shit. You have to be willing to hurt to stay broke. And you have to stay to be out of shape and let your body fall apart. It hurts too. Mm -hmm. Like you're tired, your body hurts. Right. Well, guess what? Your pain. When you train, your body hurts, you're mm -hmm. tired. To be rich is hurts too. Mm -hmm. Like it hurts on both sides. Like when once I start like seeing the it you're not Choose going your to be able to avoid the pain or the hurt. You only get to make a decision about which pain do you want to take on. Like we, we were talking about this with our therapist today. You and I last year, a year ago at this point, we were sitting at a place where we had to fix some things in our relationship. And we did. And <clears throat> marriage sat in the balance in probably the most serious way it had mm -hmm. since 2016. And he had made the comment to us like that, you know, two thirds of the yeah. divorces that happen don't need to happen. Mm -hmm. They're just people who cannot get over the hump. Mm -hmm. They can't get to that place of surrender right. to keep growing with each other. If we were divorced right now, mm -hmm. it'd, it, there'd be some upside and there'd be some massive painful downsides. Mm -hmm. Staying married, there's some upsides, some painful downsides. I mean, like you're gonna pay up, you're gonna hurt no matter what you choose to do. Well, he was saying too, he's like, you know, if you guys would have got divorced, it would have been an unnecessary divorce. You know, you just get to this point where you're like, oh, today's, I've had enough. And instead of it's like, okay, well, is that true? And for us, it's like, we were like, all right, we gotta, we gotta get over this hump. We gotta get over this. And we are very successful and in great shape. And I think when you get to this, this place, you almost become less tolerant, right? Mm -hmm. So then it has to become a place of, of choosing to grow together, yeah. choosing to have the arguments and the things and whatever it is because you know you need to go to the next level and i think people get less tolerant because they're like i'm too awesome for you and i'm i'm done tolerating you and you're like huh which i understand i mean if you're if you're in a place where you're if you're in a place where you're living in the status quo and you've been doing this for years and years and years it's very difficult in marriage to make a shift it's just difficult because you get stuck in your patterns and i can see mm -hmm. why couples can just go through the game of we're going to wait until the kids get older We'll just kind of endure through what the current game is. We'll drink to hide from each other. We'll go out with friends instead of each other with, mm -hmm. on date nights. We'll like not go on vacation together unless we're going with a bunch of other couples that are drinking the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like there's this ability you could actually be in a relationship with another person for 10, 15, 20 yeah. years and be hiding the whole time. And then all of a sudden you're like exposed when you, kids are gone. Kids are gone or COVID happens. And all of a sudden you're like, shit, I don't actually have anything to talk to this person about. Yeah. And not only that, it's like, I don't really care. Like yeah. you just kind of become comfortable and numb. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. I, I kind of got to this place where I, we've experienced like so much abundance in so many areas that I was like, okay, I'm ready to take my spirit, spirituality and my relationship to the next level. Because ultimately, like I felt like I would hit all these markers and there was still a piece of me that's like, what's missing? So I, I genuinely believe like, you, we can create whatever we want, whether it's with your relationship, whether it's with your body, like we, we truly can. And I think that a lot of people sell themselves short by just saying like, I can't or judging other people. And it really, like you said, it's like, it's just a matter of what pain it's hard, no matter what, like if you're not at our level financially, you're still financially struggling at some level. 
And so when you understand that, it's kind of for me, it's like, okay, well, what can I do? If it's always going to be a challenge in this life, what can I do that's going to give me the best outcome to give me the results that I want? That's seriously the only thing I was trying to get out of that post. Like, I, I, I realize my waist looks like two inches. Well, I honestly, genetically, I have a really teeny waist. Like, thank you, mm -hmm. mom. But my only thing was saying like, hey, like change your patterns. Like I get up and I, yeah, I, when I'm cutting, I'm doing a little more cardio and things like that. But normally I'm like, I'm getting up and I'm working out, you know, five days a week and I'm lifting weights. Did you know before I was doing the same exact thing, but my body was always inflamed and I mm. felt just like shit. Mm. And I was like, I'm already putting in the time. And it's because I was doing hit workouts and I was eating shitty food. So I was always tired, always fatigued and always inflamed. Yeah. And Oh, the only thing I did, it wasn't that I wasn't doing the work or wasn't putting the time into it. It's, it's that I wasn't getting the result because I was uneducated about what to do. So I just thought, oh, hit workouts. I'm going to freaking just do hit workouts. Okay, well, I'm just going to like starve myself all day and have three Starbucks because that zero calorie thing seems to work for people. I just won't eat for the rest of my life. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm starving and I look inflamed. Yeah. And it was in that, in those, in, like I kind of recognized that in myself and I was like, I'm done. Like I'm already putting in the time. So I think people abide by these stories and these patterns. And I'm like, dude, you're, 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 all you gotta do is shift those. It's already hard for you now. You're already putting in the time. So you need to let go of these limiting beliefs and literally shift your patterns to give you the result that you're looking for. Like that's it. And that's what we did. That's what we're doing. That's what that's we're what doing. That's what we're even doing in marriage. Yeah. It's like weekly therapy. I'm like, hey, we could go on a date night once a week, which we were. And I was like, why don't we do a therapy session every week where we have these, I call it a working hour in our marriage. Because a date night, it's a little bit lighter. It's fun. It's like we might have a cocktail or two. But like I want to, and, and even a day lunch, a day lunch seems kind of light. I'm like, I want a working hour in our marriage where we can discuss tough topics when needed and don't have it explode in a fight, right? So that is something where like, hey, instead of a lunch, let's do this. Like it's shifting your patterns to prioritize mm -hmm. the outcome that you're looking for. Yeah. Something as simple as like getting up and meditating every morning. If you get up and you do your stack, if you get up and read your scriptures, if you get up and do, I, I do a lot of content or journaling in the morning. Um, it's like doing these little things. People think that they're like, oh, I need to get up and do an hour and a half of journaling. I'm like, I do like 10 minutes of writing every morning. I'm like, 10 minutes. I'm like, it doesn't take a lot. It takes consistency in the things that will give you the result that you're wanting. Listen, I have, I started lifting. I mean, I, I had been an athlete before. So it's like, it's not like my, I didn't have muscle memory, but I started lifting a year ago. It's April. It was last May. I made the commitment to you in Miami. And then a year later, year later, I'm at 190 pounds that's, last year. That's not even that much now time. Now I'm at 220 pounds. That's not even that much time. When I showed you that picture of you, like the surfer Garrett of you two years ago, mm -hmm. I mean, you've always been like a big frame, but you went through the surfer phase and you were like a skinny surfer dude. Yeah. Like if, if I showed you those side by side and, and I was like, this is you, guess how long this took? This is a one year transformation of you shifting your surfing pattern to lifting weights. Yeah. So shifting 19 cliff bars a day to chicken and rice. Yeah. I'm like, that's all you gotta do. It's not gonna take you any more time. Yep. You're gonna shift these two things and this is the man you can become in a year. You'd be like, there's no fucking way. And that's what people have a hard time with mm -hmm. is they don't believe it's possible so they don't even commit. I don't try, they don't won't try. try. I, and I think there's a lot of it. It's just not getting an ability to taste what it could taste like. Mm -hmm. You know, marriage is the same thing. It's a lot easier just to quit. It's a lot easier to just numb out. It's a lot easier to just play the game the way is it, it is. And to, well, that's the story though. The story is a lot easier to do those things than it is to actually do the work required to go change it. Mm -hmm. Because it, it hurts. I mean, you and I are super freaks. Like we do, we're extreme as, we're extreme as fuck about how we operate and how we do things. And when we committed to changing and transforming our marriage, I mean, it wasn't like we took on like light topics. Like we put it all on the line. We've put it all on the line over and over and over and over again in every area of our lives. And I think I'm just now at this point in our lives, like starting to recognize how many times we've done that. Yeah. And over how many decades yeah. we've been doing it. I, I sometimes, some of our, I always listen to our podcast and I'll be like, 
holy shit we've gone through a lot like our last one you're like yeah you know i got married when i was 22 had a baby had cancer was on food stamps got divorced met danielle then <laughs> lost all my teeth again was on a pick line then we lost all our money went bankrupt <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm like yeah like when people that don't like have kids tell me they're tired i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> well and there's just the amount of time and energy we have spent to choose to go to the next level mm -hmm every level that comes like that you can't give that to people and that's what i hope here with the show is that <clears throat> there's an opportunity for you just to see like we never come in and try to pretend like we have all the answers in marriage we don't but what's happening oh year over year over year is that we're just going to be straight with you like we're starting to dominate everyone like our whole life moves forward every year body being balanced business like it's not we're not moving one area forward our bodies are moving forward our being in our spiritual relationship with god is moving forward our relationship and balance with ourselves as a couple sex intimacy communication our relationship with our kids and our family our relationship with our money our companies our business our clients like everything's moving and for years when people would watch us like they were like you couldn't really see the change mm -hmm. it's like nobody saw the change in me in the first three months of training momentum has to catch yeah but nine months into my training things like literally over about four week time period all of a sudden my body shut okay we're doing this here we go so you got a chance you got a choice and every single week we've got a chance to give you a choice too and that choice is well sit here and listen to the show and do nothing or get yourself into the warrior launch membership we've got a free membership we'll give you access to the weekly day to life experience call you know, test it out for four weeks, see what you feel. If you love it at the end of it, keep it 197 a month. You don't love it, no worries, you cancel, no harm, no foul. Along with that, you're gonna get the Warrior app. You're also gonna get access to uh, Warrior Launch Program, which is our protocol of teaching, guiding you how to live the Warrior's Way system. On top of this, you're also gonna get access to um, inside of the Warrior app, a uh, whole bunch of other curriculum, including the new Warrior's Way book, which is the culmination of all those seven books I wrote into the most profoundly potent version uh, that's not published right now. It's just available inside of our membership site. So you can gain access to all that for free today by going to warriorlaunch.com. Well, and if you want more information on me, I relaunched my blog called Danielle K. White. I am the creator of Natural Beauty Row Hair Extensions, and I love fashion, fitness, and family. So I decided to relaunch my brand and my blog. Go to daniellekwhite.com to find out more information on either me or check out naturalbeautyrowseducation.com. All right, my friends. Thanks so much for being here. Next, uh, next episode, we're going to talk about the Bible. Is that what you want to talk, talk about, about today? We've got that's, our, that's our next one. Nope, nope. Okay. I want to talk about fitness this first show. Second one, we're going to talk about the Bible and some unintended consequences that came about from reading the Bible every single morning. <laughs> All right, my friends, have a great week. We'll talk to you next week here on the Date Your Wife podcast. Bye.